So in light of recent events, a lot of people have been asking me about standalone ECUs, if they should go to a standalone ECU, and we kind of did talk about them in our access port videos. So with that, everything that we're about to talk about in this video is intended for you to use off of public roads. No public streets with this stuff, you guys. So... Let's talk about some standalone. So what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now before you guys just go out onto the interwebs and start buying standalones, which I know some people have done, everyone needs to like chill out for 10 minutes of buying standalones because I don't think everyone fully understands what you need to do or what standalone may work for you. So I've gone through, I found every standalone option that works for Subarus, for plug and play, and things that are not plug and play. But before we get into the recommendations for all of these ECUs, there's some things we need to talk about first. First of all, you need to know what ECU or ECM is right for you. Not every single ECU out there is created equal. You have Haltech 1000 series, 1500 series, 2500 series, different versions of Link ECUs. Um, AEM Infinity has different part numbers for their versions as well, and the list goes on through all of these other manufacturers. Not every single ECU will do the same thing as other ECUs. But when you go into buying an ECU, you need to know how, like for Subarus, this can be standard, but this can be said about any car out there. You need to know how many cylinders you need to support. You need to know what your fuel system is, whether it's port injection versus direct injection, because not all ECUs are going to support direct injection. Different ECUs will have different features, they'll have a different amount of inputs and outputs for you to be able to wire things in, and the list will go on. So you need to be able to understand what do I want out of this ECM? What do I want it to do for me? And is it right for what I'm doing with the car? Remember, some some ECUs may come with like launch control, rolling anti-lag. Other ones may not. If that's a feature you're looking for, maybe you need to look into ECUs with those features. So don't just go jump in the jump in the gun and buying the first ECU you find. Keep in mind, not all ECUs are created equal. Second, you need to understand what your budget is. Going into a standalone is very expensive. It can get very expensive very quickly. As most of you guys know, I run a Haltech. 2500 in my STI behind me. When I initially went into purchasing a standalone, I didn't understand all the cost that was associated with it. I don't run patch harnesses or anything like that. I made my own engine harness, which is a daunting task, but you need to understand that you're looking at the ECU. If you're looking at a digital display, that's another thing you have to consider. Uh, sensor costs, all of, these, all of these things will start to add up. And like we talked about previously, these different features in different ECUs will increase the price if you are looking for one with more and more features than other ones. So understand your budget when you go into this stuff. And like we just talked about, supporting accessories which will tie back into your budget. If you are wanting something that goes to a digital dash display, if you're wanting something that has like a wideband controller or all of these other features or accessories to be able to bundle into your ECU, those add up quite quick. For example, the display, I use the Haltech IC7 digital dash. That display is another $1,100 on top of the $2,500 you're already spending on top of the ECU. So when you go into doing something like this, you need to realize, do I really need this digital dash or is there a way that I can make this aftermarket ECU speak with my stock cluster to be able to retain all of the features that I want if and we'll get into some of that stuff here in a little bit but you need to know what accessories do I want what accessories are even offered do I need this stuff and if you are going down this route of considering doing standalone I highly suggest talking to your tuner because they're gonna be like all right these are the goals with the car. This is what I suggest doing. This is what I have experience with doing. Next up, a couple quick questions that I've gotten in DMs over the past week about people looking into standalones. Yes, a standalone can record your vehicle identification number or your VIN number. Typically, it's gonna be programmable into the display screen or it's gonna be programmable into the ECM. For the Haltech, it's programmable into the ECM. The display will also track mileage on the vehicle so that way you're not losing how many miles are on the chassis and things of that nature. So you can just hop into the software, plug into your display or your ECU, and then as you continue to drive the car, the wheel speed sensors will track mileage and tack it onto whatever input you put into the software for how many miles are on the car. So it will track that stuff. Don't worry about that. Next up, another one that I've gotten quite a bit, and I don't have a 100% solid answer on this, but from what I could find, is will a standalone ECU still work with OBD2 functionality? Because I know some of you guys still have to pass, pass emissions. Now what I could find is if you're using a direct replacement ECU, one that uses a patch harness, and we'll get into what a patch harness is here in a second, then it may still function with the OEM OBD2 port, which is important for you guys who have to go get emissions testing, things of that nature. Most aftermarket ECUs 
will still give DTCs and trouble codes, so that way they will still populate. Now, I'm not 100% certain. I think it's very ECU heavily dependent on which ones will actually work with the OBD2 port, but, but I couldn't find any solid 100% answer saying yes it will work, no it will not work. For the most part, whenever you run an aftermarket ECM, uh, you have like a yellow cable or some type of cable that will go from the ECU into your laptop and allow you to be able to view all of these parameters, all the DTCs and all the trouble codes for your car. Okay, so I mentioned the word patch harness. If you don't know what a patch harness is, a patch harness is typically going to be something that inter it's like the middleman between your stock wiring harness and your new aftermarket ECU. Because not every ECU out there is a plug and play option for your car, you can go down the route of getting a custom patch harness made. There is one company that I found, or there's one company that I saw suggested called Boom Slang that will make these custom patch harnesses for people. You can expect those custom patch harnesses to come in at around $600 depending on what your car is, um, what the ECU you're using is, but that patch harness is gonna make your life a lot easier because the whole point of the patch harness is so that you don't have to de-pin your stock engine harness or your stock harness in your car and repin it to configure that to your new ECU. It's all going to be a plug and play option so that way you can take your stock wiring, plug it into this patch harness, and then plug it into the new ECM. Now the next important thing that we need to understand before going into ECMs is CAN bus. If you don't know what CAN bus is, you're about to figure it out. So first of all, what does CAN bus stand for? It is a controller area network. And I want you to think of CAN bus like like the skeletal, oh, no, I want you to think of CAN bus like the nervous system of your car. Think of the ECU as the brain and the CAN bus system as the nervous. Actually, hold up. I have a display piece I can show you guys. Who remembers this stuff? From all the wiring that I've taken out of the Subaru that I screwed up on doing when I was rewiring this car. CAN bus allows everything in this giant wire to be able to communicate and relay messages from one system to another. The CAN bus is typically going to be like the SRS, the gauge cluster, your ECM, your BIU, uh, your TCM, all of these wheel speed sensors, everything in the car is typically going to be controlled via CAN bus. And that is just a local network, which like I said, think of it like your nervous system. When one of these areas of the CAN bus system fails, it'll relay a message and that's what will start throwing codes, lights, things of that nature. So when it comes to CAN bus and trying to integrate it in an aftermarket ECU, you need to find something that has a CAN bus protocol already built out for your car. If you don't have a CAN bus protocol built out, you're going to run into a lot of issues um, with some of the sensor signals, things, of, things like that, if you are trying to retain 100% OEM feeling of the car. So if you don't have a CAN bus protocol built out, you might be SOL. Or, we'll talk about that actually in a little bit with some of these companies. Now last night I went online and I found a ton of plug and play options for Subarus, but there are some specific things that we need to keep in mind when going through this. First of all, FA20 DIT owners. It's going to be 2015 to 2021 Subaru WRXs. There is only one plug and play ECU option for you guys, and that's because you guys run a direct injected engine. There is not a lot of standalone support for direct injection Subarus right now, so the only option that you guys have is MoTeC. So keep that in mind as we go through this list. For all of my EJ boys out there, there are quite a few options, but these options are very, very vehicle specific. So we're gonna start out with Haltech first of all. So these, everything we're about to mention is all plug and play functionality for Subarus, which means you get the ECU, you get your patch harness, you plug everything in, um, you can load up the base map. Most of these aftermarket ECUs will come with base maps to be able to get your car running, um, and then you're gonna have to go get a tune after that. And so for Haltech, uh, for you 2002-2005 WRX boys, this is gonna be the EJ20, uh, which is two liter. You are supported with a plug and play harness from Haltech, and I'll have this list for all of these ECMs in the description below with the part numbers. Um, remember, this is for, these ECMs are for off-road, use only. Don't get caught with one of these. Uh, next up is going to be the EJ25 06 to 07 Subaru WRX. Now there's a caveat on this one. You have to be running a Denso OEM ECU for this standalone to be able to work. All of these for Haltech, you need to have a Denso OEM ECU for these to be able to properly work. If you have a Hitachi OEM ECU, 
you're gonna have to look into different options. Denso only. It'll say literally right on the face of the, I actually have a stock ECU, hang on. So if you get the ECU out of your car, it's literally just gonna be this little black box with a whole bunch of ports on the bottom of it. If you look at the face of it with a sticker, it'll say whether it's Denso or Hitachi. This one does say Denso on it. You guys aren't gonna be able to see that right now, but this one is a Denso. Uh, normally these are gonna live on the passenger side of the car up behind the glove box, so. Just keep that in mind, Denzel only. Next up, EJ2506 07 WRX, like we talked about, Denzel only. Uh, we also have 06 07 WRX XTI, which is Denzel only. We have EJ2506 to 2010 WRX. That's a very weird, weird, very weird year range, uh, but 06 to 010 or 06 to 10 WRX. Uh, and then we also have the EJ2506 07 WRX STI. Now there were some changes um, from 2005 to 2006 WRXs. Up until 2005, all WRXs were two liter, and then after that, they swapped over to the 2.5 liter. Um, same with the STI. There were some changes that came out from 05 to 06 to 07. All of these changes um, were integrated in. So keep in mind, some of the ECUs, if you have those years, are going to range a little bit. Next up, we have the AEM Infinity. Unfortunately, this is only supporting one one year range, which is 04 to 06 WRX and STI. Um, now keep in mind there are different submodels for AEM's Infinity ECUs for plug and play options for these cars, um, so you might have to go dig around for what exact part number you need, but they're all listed down below in this description. Uh, next up is Link ECU. So the way Link ECU does these things is actually kind of cool. So with our stock ECU here, this black box, this is just a casing. If you open this black box up, there's a motherboard in here. Now with Link ECU, you take out the old motherboard inside of this box and you put the new one in it. And then it retains all of the same factory style connection so it makes it plug and play. I can go over there. So for Link ECU, there's not a ton of options. You've got the EJ20 for 2002-2005 WRX. Uh, this is going to be manual transmission only. If you have a 4 EAT or a 5 EAT in your car, this, is, this unfortunately doesn't apply to you. Uh, then you've got EJ2504-07 STI and 0607 um, WRX STI. Now keep in mind, with the changes there, Link ECU does have two sub some part number for ECUs, like I said, they'll be linked down below. Uh, make sure you are getting the proper one for your application because you don't want to get the wrong ECU. You don't want to spend all this money and get the wrong ECU. The Link one's coming at about $1,600. Um, all of the Haltech ones are about $2,300 uh, for their plug and play options. I couldn't find a price on the AEM one because they're all like out of stock and discontinued for some reason, but I know they still sell them. Uh, we have two more ECM options to go over. Now, for like I said, for you WRX boys, MoTeC. We're gonna talk about MoTeC for a minute. This is going to be for 2015 to 2019 WRX owners. This is the FA20 DIT only, and this is the M142 unit. MoTeC's like the Gucci of these aftermarket ECUs based off the price. Uh, MoTeC comes in at about $6,900 for you FA20 boys before tax and shipping. It's a little steep um, with the with the FA20 there's just not a whole lot of options out there for tuning because it uses direct injection on it so um, you guys are kind of SOL until other options do come out into the market unfortunately but I mean that's what we got to work with um, the other one that is supported by MoTeC is the 2009 to 2010 WRX that's the M800 unit for $3,500 I also saw MoTeC's M150 unit um, but I couldn't get exact confirmation for year ranges so I did leave that one out but I do know that MoTeC does support other year ranges. now here's another one that I've seen a lot of people mentioning and I I want to I want to be able to try to help you guys on this one which is Mtron. Mtron has no zero absolutely zero plug and play options directly from Mtron. So if you're looking at buying an Mtron ECU, keep in mind you cannot buy a plug and play model. They do show that they have plug and play models on their website, but they are not sustainable for USDM or left-hand drive vehicles, which is what we have here in the United States. So if you are looking at buying an Mtron ECU, they do support the SL and KV oh they do support the SL series and the KV series ECM, um, but there is a caveat of that. You will need to buy a patch harness for this ECU. Like we talked about, Boom Slang does make these harnesses. That harness alone is going to be $600, so you need to buy that harness. You also need to go on there and you need to buy their Subaru STI application kit for the CAN bus protocol to be built. That's another $250. On top of that, you're looking at the ECU. Uh, KV series will range between $3,400 and $5,300. Uh, SL series will range between $2,500 and $2,900. So depending on what setup you're looking at, you're going to be spending an additional $850, $900 on a patch harness and the CAN bus protocol to be built out. So those are just some of the options that are out there. There are more options like FuelTech and these other ones, which I don't think FuelTech supports any Subaru stuff right now. But um, 
I hope that gives a little bit of clarity between like what is plug and play and what is not plug and play. Now for those of you that I did not mention that are not plug and play like I am, because my car's not plug and play, you can go the route of buying a Haltech Elite 2500 with a with a boom sling patch harness. If you had like a 2016 or 2015 plus STI. Now here's the thing, Haltech doesn't fully have their CAN bus protocol built out or they don't have a CAN bus protocol built out for 2015 plus WX and STI, which means that some of the features that you're gonna be trying to use will not work. So even if you buy the Haltech and the plug and play harness, um, you still may be SOL on some things. For me, I run their generation four software on mine. And it works for some things. I'm able to retain my wheel speed sensors, my brake switch, random little things here and there, but definitely not everything that the car has come with. I had to go in there and hand wire in a lot of these sensors um, to be able to retain a lot of the OEM functionality. And I know that can sound daunting, especially when I show you this massive wire bundle. It can get daunting. So if you do decide to go the route of using a standalone on a car that doesn't have canvas protocol built out you may need to go down the route of hand doing some of these connections to be able to retain some of the features that you want. The other thing to note is if your car is not supported by CAN bus and you are using one of these aftermarket ECMs, your gauge cluster may not work as intended either unless you go in there and you try to trick the system and hand wire things in. Um, for those that do decide to go with a standalone digital display like I did, you will need to go in there and you will need to bypass the alternator charging wire um, to be able to retain your alternator charging functions um, for the car. So I hope this clears up a lot of the um, ECM questions that you guys had regarding this stuff. If you guys do have any more questions, I can do my best to try to answer them down below. I am not 100% versed in standalone ECMs. I've got the experience with it from this car of building my own harness and doing all that stuff and playing with Canvas protocols a little bit. But like I said, I'm 100% not an expert in this stuff. I'm learning like you guys are. So if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be uh, one of these corners, I'm not your dad. If you wanna do it, you'll do it. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies. Woo!